Recently, I made a video on John Marston's not-so-secret but elusive deceased daughter, who we only hear tell of on the odd occasion in Red Dead Redemption. In today's video, we're taking a look at Arthur Morgan's own only spoken of deceased child. Of course, I'm talking about Arthur Morgan's son, Isaac. The son plot point is delivered cleverly. It's not important as it's from way before Red Dead Redemption 2's events, but I believe it's a life lesson Arthur took to heart and has utilised within the game's story as a fundamental reasoning for his base moral code. Now, you'd never properly find out about Arthur's son in Red Dead Redemption 2 if you don't opt to help Reigns fall in Chapter 6, and from there, during a mission, it's a dialogue choice that you can opt not to do, or may miss if you aren't paying attention, or you could choose the other option. Meaning, while it's not obscure knowledge, it's not exactly common either, as once you've committed to helping Reigns fall, it's a part of the main story. So, here's where Arthur talks about his son. You know, I had a son once, years ago. Don't talk about him much. No, oh, what was his name? Isaac. His mother, Eliza, was a waitress I met. When she got pregnant, she knew who I was, what my life was. I didn't want to promise nothing I couldn't keep, but I said I'd do right by them. Every few months, I'd stop by there for a few days. He was such a good kid. She was too, I guess. <laughs> Just a kid, 19. What happened? I got there one day and saw two crosses outside. I knew right away. Turned out some bastards had come through, robbed them, and shot them dead. Wait, stop here. I want to pick some ginseng. And offered $10. It hardened me, feeling that kind of pain, I guess. I had to... I don't know. I ain't been a good man. At least, you understand something of your anger. I understand that you can't be a bad man and expect good things to happen to you. I mean, you have to respect that midway through that conversation, Rainsfall interrupted Arthur at the worst point in his story to explain that he wants to pick up some ginseng. Arthur also does mention to Sister Calderon in Chapter 6 that he had a son who passed away, but this is also a missable encounter as despite being a part of the story, if you don't help her in her side quests or have high enough honour, this scene will be with Reverend Swanson instead and will play out differently. I had a son. He passed away. Arthur also indirectly mentions Isaac in another mission too, but more on that shortly. Arthur had a son named Isaac with a young woman named Eliza. After hearing about his son's birth, Arthur decided he'd try to do right by the family he'd found he created, stopping by for a few days every now and then to provide help where he can. Ultimately, Arthur tried to live the outlaw life and be a good father to his son. Now the third time that Isaac is referenced, or the first actually, because it's the first in chronological order, is during the fishing mission with Jack Marston in Chapter 2. You know, this reminds me, I taught another boy to fish once, a long time ago. You mean Lenny? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, this was long before I met Lenny. Long before you was even born. Arthur states he once taught another young boy to fish. Jack asks if he was referring to Lenny, to which Arthur says that he isn't and that this was long before Jack's birth and before he even met Lenny. This was likely a reference to Isaac, but it's not confirmed. But if it is a reference to Isaac, it does prove that Arthur did in fact try to do right by the family that he'd created by actively participating in the upbringing of the child. As he states, one day he arrived at Isaac and Eliza's home to find two graves outside, to later find out his family, if you will, had been shot and killed by outlaws, robbed for a grand total of $10. Which I don't know about you lot, but I'd kill for that kind of money too. 
giving me the ad revenue. Anyways, Arthur's takeaway moral from this story is you can't be a bad person and expect good things to come your way. Hence why Arthur's always stating that John Marston is the luckiest man alive, being able to live the outlaw life and still have his son be alive as well as dodge death far too closely on several occasions. It explains Arthur's strong feelings for John walking out on his child and the gang for one year because he feels like on two levels it offends lessons he's learned in his life. One, John's son got to live, Arthur's died. Arthur perceives this as luck on John's side and karma on his, and he sees John's actions as proof that he takes it for granted. And two, Isaac's death hardened Arthur's commitment to the gang, to him that is his family, and the way he sees it, you can't take that for granted the way John has. Which is where Isaac's death has had a profound narrative effect on Arthur's treatment of John and his commitment to the gang. Now it's unknown what Arthur did to those who killed his family, though the fact that anyone knew what happened suggests to me that maybe the local law court and dealt with them, if not we all know that Arthur would have made short work of them. That being said, Arthur states it himself, he's not in the revenge business. As Dutch for one has preached to never seek revenge, and he also refers to it himself as an idiot's game. So maybe there's a moment of weakness and he had a bit of experience, and did seek revenge on those who killed his family only to find that he felt no form of alleviation after the fact. Maybe that's what Arthur was going to tell Reigns for when he said I had to and then hesitated before going on to express the moral of his story. It hardened me, feeling that kind of pain, I guess. I had to... I don't know. The deeper you look into this, the more significant it appears as if Isaac's death was to Arthur Morgan's character being shaped, at least in the way that we know him in Red Dead Redemption 2. But I guess that's all there is to this little piece of lore, I thought it was worth a video. A couple of people asked me to do a video on this, and considering the only videos on it I could find were either just gameplays of the Reigns 4 mission, or 10 plus minute videos of people repeating themselves over and over while achieving no specific point. I thought it wouldn't go amiss. That's not to say that there aren't probably other good videos on this out there because there almost certainly are, but I'll conclude this video in the solace that I haven't made the worst. So thank you all for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, be sure to go ahead leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, I'd really appreciate it. Maybe consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com forward slash fisheryarpster, please don't ask about the link name, I really don't have an answer. There's some cool content over those ways if you guys want it, including a full script draft for this video. But in the end of the day, whether or not you think all that stuff is worth it is completely up to you, I'm not too fussed either way. Anyways, I'll see you all very soon with another video at some point.